welcome. My name is Nick Bonatotovis. I am the marketing manager for Hurricane Marketing Enterprises, and we have a special treat for you. We are in Baltimore in this beautiful city. That's what you see in the skyline before you. And we are going to interview Mr. Steve the Hurricane. So thanks for joining us, Steve. I'm very excited. Going to dive deep into the inner workings of the hurricane. <laughs> Looking All forward to it. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I really wanted to get a background of you younger, you know, in your youth and, you know, that entrepreneur side, you know, how did this come? Was it, you know, was it something early on that you had as an entrepreneur? So by accident, I kind of fell into it and it was all because I just, I don't know, I've always had this way of viewing money as not so much a necessity and something to strive for, but if I need money, I'll make money. And that, 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 that whole mindset of it, it's not the end goal, but if you need it, you go make it, you go earn it. So as a child, my parents gave me an allowance, I wanted to earn more money. So if I wanted to earn more money in the allowance, I had to find a way to generate revenue. So I had uh, lemonade stands as a kid. I remember buying an, uh, I wanted to buy a remote control car. And so I ended up having a lemonade stand to get the money to buy the remote control car. I remember when I was in second grade, we had a fundraiser and they had this clear, like see-through telephone and that was level nine in the fundraiser and it was like 10 levels. And so I quickly went out and generated enough sales to make level nine to get that phone. When I was in high school, I sold blow pops on the bus and it was fantastic all the way up until I got busted by the principal, <laughs> right? So it just always, I, I always knew that if I wanted to get something, it would take money to get it. I didn't necessarily want to get like a full-time job, but it was always to obtain something. And so I just found a way to do it. And so by nature, just through that evolution as I grew up, I started to realize that if I want to control my own destiny, having a job isn't going to allow me to do that. Having to answer to someone else isn't going to allow me to do it. I like the freedom and the flexibility of generating income the way I want to do it and as much or as little as I want and I need. And you you know now, I mean, obviously there are times when I'll take a month off of work and I'll just leave and just go and do my own thing and be away with my family and my kids because working isn't the priority. It's my time, it's my wife, it's my kids, it's what's important to me. Awesome. Yeah, time is, you know, the most valuable possession. So, you know, being able to have that flexibility is pretty awesome. Now, um, growing up and you know, and and learning all of these things and, and the businesses now that you've created, you know, you've got all these different divisions from you know home care to small business to you know mindfulness. You know, you got all these things going on. You got a nonprofit. You know, having that entrepreneur aspect to being able to create all these things. What do you think is the greatest skill set? Um, either that you know you find in entrepreneurship or one that you have um, that has helped you to be able to do this and be as successful as you are I, I everything you know me everything has to come back to faith so I just I put it out there I trust I, 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 I read scripture I meditate on it I pray daily I try to put God first in my life and do his work and then he speaks to me, not necessarily like, like voice speaks to me, but just through opportunities. So I'll see an opportunity, I'll see a need for something. And so I'm like, there has to be a way to do it. And so the way my mind works is very problem solving. And then once I solve a problem, I then take it and turn it into a, a way to monetize it. So that, yes, I'm helping people in exchange for this. And so it's just that's just a gift that I have. And then just taking it and driving it. And then the other part of it would be surrounding yourself with people to help you fulfill it. So you think about Nicole, you think about yourself and Jennifer and Dee and the other people who work at Hurricane Marketing Enterprises. I'll come in with a great idea. I'll come in with a, a system, a way, a solution to a problem that exists. And then I'll say, okay, Here's how, here's the product. Here's how we monetize this. Now, how do we provide it? And then I give it to my staff and let them do what they do best. So no one person can do it by themselves. That's the, the ultimate saying here. 
have faith, trust yourself, do what you're good at, and then delegate to those to handle things that you're not good at. That's great. It leads into my next question. What um, are you not good at or something that maybe you wish you were, were better at? So we always have our weaknesses, and there's two ways to look at a weakness. You could take a weakness and work at improving it, or you can take your weakness and just accept that this is your weakness and focus on your strengths and delegate to your weaknesses. And that's exactly what I like to do. I'm gonna focus on my strengths, I can move faster when I'm focusing on my strengths and get more accomplished, and then outsource to people who have strengths that are my weaknesses. Something that I'm really bad at would be the accounting, the numbers, once the numbers are given to me, I'm excellent with them, but figuring it out, determining it, the data entry, the, the tedious work that goes into all of that, I am absolutely awful at it. In my career now, I've had two different accountants. Switching the accountants earlier this year in April was one of the lengthiest processes ever. I thought it was going to be a month and it was more like three, four months, but it was worth it in the end. And now that I have the reports from the, the data that was collected, it allows me to govern, manage money, manage what we're doing more efficiently. Now, so have you done anything to fix that or to try and help that weakness? Or are you just comfortable with, hey, I have other people to handle that weakness, so I'll just handle my strengths? Definitely more comfortable delegating to other people that I'm confident in getting the job done. Has it burned me in the past? Yes. But for the most part, 80% of the time, if somebody is an expert at something, I trust them, let them do it, I don't get in their way, they do it, they come back and deliver, and they usually exceed my expectations because it's a weakness of mine. So if somebody's really good at it, they, they deliver on it, I'm happy. Awesome. Um, so the next thing I wanted to know is, you know, as you've grown now and, and the time has evolved and the years in, in business, was there anything when you were going through your business that you know now that you didn't, that you wish you would have known back when you, you know, were first getting started? Without a doubt, it definitely is the, the way, right? When you think about any business, while there's always new inventions and there's new processes and there's new ideas and thoughts, business is business. Business has been around since the beginning of time. Even you go biblical before Christ, I mean, businesses have always, markets and such, it's always existed. And so as a result of that, there is always someone out there who has been where you are. And so as a speaker, as an entrepreneur who has a consulting business, I wish I had found about the consultants that help consulting businesses grow before I did. I didn't find the Speaking Empire, which is the group that I went with. I didn't find them until 2015. I started the company in 2012. Those first three years, we did okay, like we got the business going, we got clients, we were operating, but that was me flying by the seat of my pants, figuring out about 80% of what we had to do. The speaking empire helped me to determine that last 20%, which, you know, 10% of it I knew I didn't know, but then there was a whole 10% that I didn't know I didn't know that I learned, and that helped me to scale quickly, break the seven-figure mark, and really grow revenue, and really impact the results that we're looking to do. So it wasn't just about growing the revenue. The revenue came because of the successes of our clients, but we didn't get the right clients, and we didn't have the right successes until we brought consulting in for ourselves. So the the tip here for everybody is get a consultant to help you with your business and you won't make mistakes. You'll grow smarter, you'll grow faster, and you'll grow stronger. Awesome. Good stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you've been you've been doing all this and, and, and that's a great, great tip. You know, invest in yourself. How often have you heard that? You know, you gotta talk to people that have done it before. Um, what would you say? You know, in all these years and all these things, you're speaking all over the country, you know, these businesses that you've developed, what is your, and it doesn't, it can be, you know, business or, or personal, what is your most proud accomplishment? Hmm. My most proud accomplishment would definitely be uh, the balance that I have in my life. So it's, 
it's not just about the business. Like you heard me say before, and, and I'll, I'll just go straight biblical, right? You know, Jesus says in the Bible, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and money, right? Because you'll love one and you'll hate the other, or you'll compare the two and it doesn't work. And so money isn't everything. My business isn't everything. My business is a part of who I am. I really feel that my biggest successes, my biggest accomplishments is being married for 10 years, staying married through all of the hurdles that we've been through and having a strong marriage and a strong foundation, raising three children that are healthy, intelligent, that they're, they're loving children, they, they're, they're smart children, they, they're focused on what they have to do, they're free spirits, they're, they're funny, they, they're great kids, spending time with my parents and my in-laws and my siblings, being involved in my church, going to the hospitals and praying with people or going to funerals and comforting people or doing uh, marriages. Like it, it, that, that whole complete person being able to work out, having a, a sub 20% body fat level as someone who's 37 years old, who does all the things that I do, being able to get a good amount of rest on a regular consistent basis. I put good food in my body. The whole package, being able to be as well-rounded, and I'm not perfect, no one is perfect. I'm constantly working at it, but being a well-rounded individual, all aspects of my life, from financial to personal to family to you know faith, having that balance is something I'm very, very proud of. And it, it allows me to accomplish more, it allows me to appreciate more, and it really impacts who I am and how my business and how everything else goes. Because if, if any one of those things are out of whack, it's gonna affect me, just as it was anybody else. But if the balance is there, what a difference it makes. And one thing that you mentioned, you know, you've talked about um, some of the struggles that you've gone through. And one thing that people often talk about in regards to entrepreneurship is that failure is one of the almost something that you strive for because no one who has ever been successful didn't fail. Like it is an essential thing that you have to fail. So with that, what would you say um, was your biggest failure and, and how did you overcome it? So I'm gonna say my biggest failure was something that I've never really spoken about. MW Advertising, or WM, it was one or the other, MW or WM Advertising. I had started a company years ago where I was doing some uh, marketing on a very local level, working with convenience stores and such, and we went out, we ended up getting a couple of customers and started doing it, and it was just so much work involved. I had a business partner, and I'm not blaming him, it just, it wasn't the right time, it wasn't the right business, it wasn't something that we were truly passionate about, something that we wanted to do. I had some cash to invest in it. I didn't lose anything. I kind of broke even at the end, but it was definitely a big learning experience. I've also had other failures in multi-level marketing groups where I thought something was great, got passionate, got motivated, started to go out and execute it, and then it wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. And so not to say that the multi-level marketing doesn't work because there are some great products and some great multi-level marketing systems out there. You think of Tupperware, Avon, Mary Kay, they've been around forever so those are obviously great models but for me it wasn't right for me I wasn't passionate enough and so I didn't put forth the proper effort to see it through and so I failed at those so those are great learning experiences that's really interesting I've never heard that story so you had another business how long did that business last Three months. <laughs> okay. And so, again, it wasn't that we couldn't keep it going. It's mm -hmm. just that we lost our we lost our mojo. We wasn't what we thought it was going to be. It wasn't. Not that it wasn't easy, because no business is easy. But it was just so that we had a great idea, and it probably could have been something. But we were focused on other things. We had jobs, and it just wasn't right. So, do you think that um, that it didn't work out because you just like weren't in it? You know, like you, there wasn't that that passion, is that something that you feel is necessary to, to have success? Absolutely. When I ask my wife, what is your favorite thing about me? Like, what, what draws you to me? Her answer every single time is your passion. Your passion, your passion, your passion. And not just like intimacy passion, but my passion for life, my passion for everything. And I've learned about myself that if I'm not passionate about something, I'm not gonna do it. So if I'm, I have to be passionate about it because then I put 100% hurricane force effort into it 
And that's what makes it thrive. That's what makes it grow. That's what makes it turn into a living, breathing organism, whatever it is. But I have to have my passion for it. And so that's something that I kind of share all the time. They call it burning desire from a, a, a term standpoint. If you don't have a burning desire for anything, entrepreneurship, relationship, whatever, it's not going to work for you. But when that burning desire is there, it will work because then you will find a way. You tap into this inner conscious, this inner soul, this inner self to find a way to achieve whatever it is you're going after because the desire is there. Awesome. All right, so we're getting towards, towards the end here. Um, and I think that this is a, a very important question. Everyone should be listening closely, okay? Um, as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, let's say that you know, everything that you've done, all these hundreds of YouTube videos, they are all gone, non-existent. And you basically had one thing to leave behind, you know, a quote or a message um, that, that you wanted to pass on. Like, what, what, would you, what would you share? What would you tell the people, the world? So I have several quotes that I love to pull from scripture, but right now today, I'm definitely gonna go with Proverbs 27, 19, and it says, as in water, face reflects face, so too does the heart of man reflect the man. And what that basically means is you have to be yourself in everything. And you have to let, like, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to let people see you cry. It's okay to fail and fall because that's real. When you're real, people see that. When you're real, people buy into it. When you're real, people understand that, hey, you know what you're doing and there's something about you that's different from everything else. We are constantly trying to be sold something. Everybody wants our money, our time. They want our attention. And the people who actually get it are the ones who are deserving of it. The people who are deserving of it are the ones who are real and not fake and phony. So be real, be yourself. If you're a great person, be a great person. If you're an average person, be an average person. People will respect you for it and that's fine. Be who you were born to be. Don't fake anything and you'll be fine. Awesome. And lastly, um, where can where can people follow you? Where do you where do you you know? Obviously, social media is a big big thing. Where's the best place to see what's going on in the world of Steve the Hurricane? Definitely, I'm gonna say Facebook. Of all, we we have we have we have the Twitter account, we have LinkedIn account. I'm on LinkedIn often, but I put the most real Steve into my Facebook. And you can follow me. I have a Facebook profile page, Steve the Hurricane, or you can just follow me on my personal profile. I can't accept any more friends, but you can just follow it, and you can see all the things that I post and comment and interact with me. That's totally fine. So Facebook, Steve the Hurricane. You see a picture of me wearing this jacket and I have a microphone on my ear. Awesome. Well, there you go. Thank you so much, Steve. I'm glad we were able to dive in and, and discover some new things that even I didn't know for as long as we've known each other. So that was pretty cool, and I'm probably going to you know, maybe even pick your brain more about that. But thanks again for joining us, and we're going to try and do more things like this as we progress, and uh, we got more stuff coming for you. Take care.